Hello and welcome to this lesson on cells in series and parallel circuits, which is part of the electricity topic for AQAA level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at applying Kirchhoff's laws to cells, both in series and in parallel arrangements. So if we've been successful and learned in today's lesson, we should be able to understand how to calculate the total cell EMF in a series circuit, how to calculate the total cell EMF in a parallel circuit, and then apply these calculations to examination style questions. So we're going to be looking at the following part of the AQA A-level physics specification, 3.5.1.4 circuits. So we can link Kirchhoff's first law, the conservation of charge or current, to work out the EMF of multiple cells in either a series or parallel configuration. So let's firstly consider cells in series. Each time charge passes through its cell, it will receive an energy per unit charge from that cell. Now remember that the charge at each point in the circuit is the same, so that tells us that there's an equal charge going through each cell at once. So the point you would notice is that each time Time your charge carriers move through your cell they will receive some energy per charge due to moving through that cell. So this tells us that the effect of adding more cells in series will increase the energy per charge given to the charge carriers in the circuit. Now the energy per charge of the charge carriers is the EMF. So this tells us that the effect of adding more cells in a series increases the EMF into the circuit. So what we can say is that in series, the total EMF is equal to the EMF of one plus the EMF of two plus the EMF of three. So if we look at an example question of this, if we had three cells in series and the first cell was had an EMF of 2 volts, the second of 3 volts and the third of 4 volts, you would notice that the total EMF is the 3 added up. So 2 plus 3 plus 4, which equals 9 volts. Now you've also just got to be mindful of the orientation and arrangement of these cells. Because if you have a cell which is in the opposite configuration to the other cells, well that EMF becomes a negative number. So in this configuration, you'll notice the middle cell the three volts is in the opposite direction so now the total emf is two volts minus three volts plus four volts which equals three volts so you must remember that if a cell is placed in the opposite direction to the other cells present in the circuit then the emf is a negative value now this is very important when working out a total emf in a circuit now we've considered cells in series how about cells in parallel? Now, each time charge passes through a cell, like we mentioned before, it will receive an energy per unit charge based on the factors moved through the cell. Now, we also know that that charge will split when it enters a junction. That, that's part of Kirchhoff's first law of electrical circuits. Now, if the cells are identical, then the charge will also split equally. Now, again, each time a charge passes through a cell, it does receive its energy per charge, but each charge is only passing through a cell once, so it only receives the energy per charge once because it's only taking one of the possible routes which will hit one cell in um, in parallel. So the effect of adding more cells in parallel does not change the energy per charge of the charge carriers in the circuit because those charge carriers will only pass through one cell in this configuration. So the effect of adding more cells in parallel does not change the total EMF of the circuit. So we can say in parallel that the total EMF is equal to the EMF of one of the battery the cells in parallel or the other battery or the other cell in parallel. So if we look at this particular example, in this case we have two cells, both with an EMF of 4 volts, well that means the total EMF is going to be 4 volts. Now it's interesting to note that, but this will not come up in an A-level examination, that if cells with different EMFs are placed in parallel, that this would effectively create a short circuit in the, in the actual circuit. So the current in this instance would then start to flow from the higher EMF cell to the lower EMF cell and will continue to take place until they reach the same EMF level. And the rate of charge moving would be determined by the resistance of, of the wires that connect the cells in parallel. So the voltage output will will 
at the start of this configuration be that of the higher cell, but will drop as the two cells equalize and will become roughly halfway between the starting values if the cells are of the same type and there's not a significant external current drawn during this equalization. Now, practically, this isn't ever carried out in the real world because if there's a significant voltage difference between the cells in parallel, then it can cause the cells to, to take damage and possibly become very hot, catch fire, or even explode from overcharging. So to summarize what we've looked at in today's lesson, that cells can be connected in either series or parallel arrangements. If the cells are connected in series, the total EMF between the ends of the chains of the cells is the sum of the potential difference across each cell. And if the cells are connected in parallel, the total EMF across the arrangement is the same as it is for one cell in that arrangement. So in this particular lesson, we've looked at the relationships between current, voltages and resistances, including cells in series and identical cells in parallel. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should be able to understand how to calculate cell EMF in series circuits, how to understand how to calculate cell EMF in parallel circuits, and then apply these calculations to examination style questions. So thank you very much for watching this lesson on cells in series and parallel circuits, which is part of the electricity topic in AQAA level physics. Thank you very much for watching and have a lovely day.